Thanks for doing this, man. Thank you for doing this, Chris. How are you? How's pandemic life? How's pandemic life? It's colorful in, in all directions. It really is. It's made us uh, reevaluate everything in our lives, hasn't it? I said, yeah, I had to like look at myself a lot, especially last year. Like, okay, who am I if I'm not on stage with loads of people watching? And it was really interesting to kind of strip that back. So what'd you find out? Who are you? Well, I'm just a little human soul, like, <laughs> like we all are, and doing my best and probably here to sing some songs and uh, and um, on a more serious note, I feel like I've tried to not need external validation quite so much. That's interesting because as an artist, uh, that's your whole MO in a way. I mean, obviously you're putting art into the world, but you you need that back. That is kind of the whole point of getting on a stage and performing. Yes. I'm trying to get to the point where I don't need it back. I just like it back. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need the pat on the head. You like the pat on the head. <laughs> well, let's talk about a new single, Coldplay, coming out of nowhere. So maybe 2021 won't be such a crap year. Higher Power, um, I'd love to get your take on it. Where is it coming from? What's the inspiration? What are you trying to say? Uh, well, I don't really know where songs come from. They just sort of land sometimes. This one, uh, the title Higher Power, I had written down for a while and was waiting to see what song might, might if, if a song might arrive. I was trying some other songs with that title. And then one day uh, in December of 2019, um, I was playing a drum beat on a sync and I recorded it on my phone and then went and played this keyboard and this song just fell out and landed in like 10 minutes. So when you say a sync, you're not talking about some sort of tech equipment thing. You're talking an actual sync. Talk about a bathroom sync, yeah. <laughs> Wait a second. So you've been doing this for like over 20 years. Uh, you have access to all the greatest studios in the world. And you're telling me Chris Martin is working songs out in the bathroom on the sync? Yeah, this is, that's, you can hear it in the track. You can, it's still in there. It's like, that's the sound of a sink. It's interesting though, you say 2019. So this has been uh, uh, going for a while here. It wasn't the only thing we've done, but it's the only thing we're talking about today. <laughs> no, 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 fair enough. But um, I, the reason why I bring it up is because when we talk to artists nowadays, it's like, you gotta, you gotta get the music out fast. You know, you have an idea, you put it on, it hits the airwaves, you move on to the next thing. Uh, and I'd be curious to know your uh, feelings on the way the music business has changed. Does this new world work for your style or is it kind of a pain? No, nothing's a pain. Um, I think that on an artistic level, it's just the best time ever to be an artist. Not only does all the great art ever still exist, and you can still go and look at Monet or listen to Chopin or the Beatles or Brian Adams, whoever you want to listen to, but also you're living in an age where more people than ever are making music, more people than ever have access to releasing that music. There is some way to go in how people are rewarded for their creativity. But in terms of if you're lucky enough to be an artist, it's just, there's just inspiration everywhere. And you always seeing or hearing things that just make you want to improve. I'd be curious um, uh, on that, on the tip of putting stuff out. Like I'm a stand up comic, I tour, I do shows. And back in the day when I started 20 plus years ago, the material has to be perfect before you, you know, bless people by seeing it or whatever. Nowadays, it, just just get it out it don't what is the the saying don't let perfect be the enemy of good like just get it out get it into the world and see what happens how do you feel about that yeah that's not how we work but, but i respect that philosophy i think uh i think with a band like us our, our songs tend to benefit from a bit of percolation and gotcha. just getting you know the song sometimes our favorite songs, they, they arrive in their sort of skeletal form. And then it's our job to work out how to craft it, how to arrange it, what Johnny's playing, what, you know, so we take a while, especially fun enough on the songs that land very quickly, like a higher power, or we have some other ones. We, in a strange way, because they came from a place I don't really understand, we spend a while like making sure we're doing it the best way. 
I'd love to talk to you about touring. Uh, everyone in the world has been sidelined for the last year. Do you miss it? Have you enjoyed the time off? Have you, uh, we talked a little bit about you reflecting as, as a human what it is, but as far as putting on a show, are you just dying to get back out there? Yeah, of course. I mean, I think humans like to be together at certain times and I love it. I love, I love playing live so much and it's half what I'm built for. So, but I'm trying not to be too impatient about, you know, to be as cliche that, you know, it is what it is right now. And uh, I don't want to waste my time being upset about that, but try and look at what's missing as an opportunity. But when the day comes that we're able to play for people, I'll be right there. Chris, you're awesome. I cannot wait to see you uh, in studio here and uh, can't wait to visit, for you to visit Canada. All right, Darren, thanks for speaking. You're the best, man. Thanks so much. Oh, brother, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.